Hello, Marvelites! You are watching Marvel's The Pull List, and I'm Ryan, aka Agent M, and we've got a special episode of the show this week. I am joined by Matt Wilson, colorist supreme, here to talk about four books that you love the coloring in, right? Like the yeah. style, the tones, whatever it is. First up, we've got Loki here, number one, which the art was done by Asad Rabik and fully painted. Why did you pick this? I had previously really enjoyed, say, Alex Ross's work, fully painted comics uh, when I was a bit younger. And then when this came out, it took fully painted comics in slightly different direction. You know, Alex Ross stuff looks very realistic and all that. And then this looked like some of the coolest fantasy heavy metal album art, which was stuff I grew up enjoying. I loved uh, his muted palettes. I really loved his use of atmospheric perspective. And then I really loved his obvious mastery of uh, human anatomy. I love what he does with lighting and shadows mm -hmm. and yeah. light throughout it. It's ethereal and it's menacing and it's cool and it's beautiful. It's yeah. all these things and he evokes it so eloquently. There's that opening spread with Thor on his knees and um, all chained up and all those figures kind of standing around and Loki on the dais up in the front. It's an astounding piece of work. So you also chose Next Wave, which is one of my all time favorite Marvel comics. Yeah, Dave McKegg's probably one of my favorite colorists. He does a great job of picking palettes that are maybe slightly off kilter, slightly uncomfortable, which I think fits the tone of that book because that book is very quirky and like <laughs> off kilter and Dave accentuates a lot of that with his color choices. And then I also appreciated the way he handled the rendering on the characters, um, a hard cut kind of style. The shadow is just kind of one solid color, not a lot of gradients and things. And it's got Fin Fang Foom in it, yeah, which is with the underpants best. on. Yes, yeah. his little tiny underpants. <laughs> uh, all right, up next we've got Thor. Uh, this run sort of after Ragnarok and, and yep. Thor and the Asgardians are gone. This brings him back. To me, uh, the epitome of like peak level superhero comics art it was Olivier Coipel colored by Laura Martin. You put them together and the result is amazing. Um, her mastery of lighting, you'd have um, Thor trapped in this, the void um, and it's these purples and grays. And then you swap, swap over to Donald Blake, um, kind of taking up residence in uh, that town in Oklahoma. And it's all sunlit and uh, bright and beautiful, kind of uh, middle America. The way she was able to just bounce between those two palettes so adeptly, and every surface is handled perfectly, the reflection on a table or the sheen off of Thor's helmet or the cloth on, on uh, you know, his cape, that kind of stuff. The way she colors lightning. Yeah. You're like looking at something that's glowing. Yeah. Uh, impossibly so. Yeah, I think it was in the second issue then, though, when, when Thor recreated Asgard. I think he does it via a giant storm. Yeah, all that lightning and the clouds and oh. all the atmosphere is expertly done. And then finally, our fourth pick is Uncanny X-Force, which is such a, like a visually dynamic yeah. book. Uh, Rick Remender uh, wrote it, and we have wonderful art by Jerome Pena, and then of course, Dean White on color. You can pick out a Dean White book almost immediately. In this book in particular, I think Rick sent that team and Jerome drew that team in places that look like no human could survive or would certainly not want to. And Dean like nailed it on the colors. I could think of a way to describe it, but it would sound more like an insult because <laughs> it's just these noxious colors. The book opens up and you've got this green. Yeah. The water is so green yeah. and it- Like pouring out of a gargoyle yeah, mouth Yeah, out of thing. the mouth and yeah. it looks like poison and yeah, it's so exactly. beautifully done and it triggers your senses yeah. in very specific ways. That team and you know is set up to handle jobs that are a little too dirty for the X-Men. <laughs> yeah. You feel it and it's a lot of it's Jerome's mark making and, and how he's drawn and then how Dean's complimented that. Thank you for picking these books, for sort of talking about coloring and, and this wonderful part of the art form that I love. I could talk about this for hours, uh, but you guys can check out Marvel's The Pull List, the podcast version where we talk about the coloring every week on the show. And of course you can follow Matt on social media and follow us and uh, yeah, stay tuned for lots more about Matt's work on War of the Realms and uh, I'll be back with more soon. I'm Ryan and this is Marvel, your universe.